What's up, this is Dr. Taylor Crick at the Washington Wellness Center and today's video is about what kind of leaky gut do you have? Um, and I think that that's an intriguing title because I think that most people have heard of leaky gut but have absolutely no idea that there are multiple types of leaky gut and that that can be detected and that they they matter very much so on a, on a clinical level. Some are harder to, to fix and uh, some they're just very, very different. So I want to explain uh, this concept of what kind of leaky gut do you have and explain how to test that. So. With leaky gut, let's start there. Little brief background before we get into that. But, you know, many people have seen um, an image like this maybe. And what we're seeing right here is that this is the, the gut lining right here. These are the gut cells and these are what's called the microvilli of the gut. And so this is food. You can see here undigested food particles. Maybe it's microorganisms. Maybe it's toxins. Uh, that's a sign that this journal was probably published in another language. Um, and here's a faulty tight junction. And we often just see this picture of like, oh, these tight junctions have broken apart and now the gut is leaky. And, you know, we kind of explain it in an elementary sense, but it, it's true too, but there's more to it. And that's what we're going to go through. So then they get into the blood and they lead to inflammatory, immunological, autoimmune or neoplastic reaction. So that's like your traditional leaky gut. Here's a graphic that we use in our office a lot, in our clinic a lot, from Nature Reviews, uh, Gastroenterology and Hepatology. And the point of this is, I'm going to go through it quickly, but just to show you that there are multiple forms of leaky gut or multiple stages of leaky gut. And this is what we use to describe this to our patients. And we don't describe this whole chart, of course, but it kind of makes sense that this is a spectrum. Leaky gut is a spectrum and gut damage is a spectrum. So here are some of the variables that, that determine you know, where you're going to fall on that spectrum. Do you have a lot of secretory IgA? Do you have a lot of good bacteria? Do you have a lot of mucus production? But n So one here is normal permeability. So we're going left to right here, one, two, three, four, four being the worst, one being the best. So this spectrum of leaky gut, this spectrum of, uh, of intestinal damage. So one is normal permeability. Good things can get in, bad things stay out, but you have normal permeability. That's where we all want to be. We all want to have this thing down here called mucosal tolerance, which is down here on the good side. Two is you could begin to have a minor defect of the barrier. So you're starting to have a little bit of a barrier defect. And then you can start to have a food sensitivity here because different things are getting in like the undigested food proteins. And it's leading down here to inflammation. It's getting you into this vicious cycle that leads to loss of tolerance, that leads to uh, inflammation of the digestive tract, that leads to eventually chronic IBD or chronic tissue damage that can start from down here and lead down there. But that's too, it's just a minor defect. So that's kind of where it's beginning. Maybe you're getting some food sensitivities, things like that. Three is when we get into increased permeability. So more of a true leaky gut and, and just going right into that same thing I just talked about, the vicious cycle of inflammation. And four is where you have a massive influx and where that you've really lost a lot of barrier integrity there. And we have another video explaining this graphic, and it's essentially the same thing, but I go into a little bit more detail on that. But just know that leaky gut is a spectrum, and not everybody's in the same place on that spectrum. So what kind of leaky gut are there? So there are two pictures here, or two things here, called a paracellular pathway, and that's more like, um, going back to this, that's more like between the cells. Right, So getting between the cells is a paracellular pathway. I'm pointing to the screen like you can see me. Right between the middle of those um, cells. And that's when the tight junctions break and things can get in. And that's traditionally what we think of when we, when we visualize leaky gut. But there's also the transcellular pathway. And what that means is that things are coming right through the middle of the cell. Like the cell wall has lost so much integrity that now things are going right through the middle, and that's not good. And seriously, the, the transcellular is harder to correct. Here's another graphic um, 
of the same thing. So paracellular are things going between the cells when these tight junction proteins break, things like LPS, then we can get uh, antibodies to things like occludins and zonulins, uh, or zonulin is released after occludin antibodies. Um, or this is transcellular right through the middle. So how do you know? Cyrex offers a test that, that can tell you this, and we found a lot of value from this um, just with, with leaky gut. And what it will tell you is really three things. It's actually a pretty simple test, but it tells you three things. One is their permeability or dysbiosis. And we can tell that by antibodies against something called LPS. Um, the second thing you can tell is, is there, these should be in a different order, I think, because epithelial cell damage is the worst. Uh, is there tight junction damage? Is there tight junction damage to those proteins that hold those cells together? When they get broken, things can get in. Is there tight junction damage? We can tell that by antibodies against occludin and zonulin. Or is there actual cell damage? If there's actual cell damage, then that's going to be more over here on this left, the transcellular pathway. If there's cell damage, the things can get right through. And going back up here, that's more like number four um, over here on the spectrum. So when we have actual cellular damage and transcellular leaky gut, that is not good. So what does that look like? Well, here's a person... And let's see, green, 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 but their, their out of range markers down here are for LPS. So they don't have any antibodies against the cells, the actomycin network. They don't have any antibodies against occludin or zonulin um, and these proteins that are coming from these tight junctions. So we can deduct from that that this person has over here on the left, they have permeability and they have dysbiosis and they have a high amount of LPS and their immune system is reactive towards that LPS. So they certainly have some leaky gut, but they don't have um, the same intestinal inflammation or tissue autoimmunity against the tight junction proteins or against the, the actual cells themselves, if that makes sense. So that's probably the, be that's the best type to have on here, uh, dysbiosis and permeability. The next one, they are green, 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 but they have some autoimmunity, some antibody reactivity against the actomycin network. So in, in from here, you know, you have to kind of ask why. And, and, you know, is it SIBO or is it, you know, something else? Is it a food sensitivity that's causing this or what's triggering this? And SIBO is, is common that it damages the cytoskeletal proteins uh, of the actual cell structure itself. So that's a possibility. Um, but this one was just the actomycin. This one is a little bit of both. So occludin and zonulins are, are out of range. So we know that there's an attack against the tight junction proteins causing that transcellular, um, transcellular leaky gut. And then there's also autoimmune reactivity against the actomycin network. So that's the cells. So this person has kind of the worst of both worlds. They've got a little bit of both. They've got things coming in between the cells, they've got things coming in through the cells, and, and that's not necessarily good. So on this chart, this person is kind of beyond number three and moved into number four here. And in these um, uh, labs too, like it can be guesstimated that this type of leaky gut, tight junction leaky gut, is gonna take at least three months of support to correct, um, to get those antibodies down and to get that healed. And the actomycin network might take more like six months. So the, the, the more severe that somebody is, I mean, you can, you can deduct this on your own. The more severe somebody is, the longer it's going to take them to, to heal and restore that integrity. But we can tell a little bit from this and we'll tell patients like, hey, uh, you, this is what you can expect is that because you have this type of leaky gut, we're going to have to continue working on this for a while. So what kind of leaky gut do you have? Interesting concept that most people aren't very familiar with. And it's something that I think is really, really important and something that I think that you can and should get tested if you're curious about your gut integrity. We've also had people come back all green and then, you know, it's, a really, it's just really good um, that we don't see any autoimmune 
um, autoimmune reactivity against the gut causing leaky gut does not mean that they don't have a leaky gut. Everybody's gut is selectively permeable and that permeability changes uh, all the time. But it means that they aren't having autoimmune immune reactivity against this leaky gut. So it can tell us a few things about kind of the mechanisms there. So cool stuff. Um, hope that's helpful. Hope you enjoyed it.